that's what I want. Okay. Right, three, two. <laughs> it's Wednesday. You know what that means. <laughs> Welcome everyone to the Bean Places <laughs> live party. I'm Alex. This is Abby. We do Hi. these every single Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central. So set your clocks to Central time. <laughs> set your clocks to Central time. Uh, and yeah, we have fun. Uh, before we get started, though, make sure to like it if you're watching on YouTube, heart it if you're watching on Facebook, and share it no everywhere, matter, no matter where you're watching. And uh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. But yeah, thanks everybody uh, for hanging out tonight. We uh, got a sweet show for you. Hello, Suzanne. It is a sweet show. And Diana and Barbara. Hello, hello. Seriously, guys, hit that like button. We're not going any further unless we get at least 10 likes before we start. Um, but just hello. Just stare at you. Yeah. <laughs> just be real weird about it. Yeah. Oh, um, it'll get weird. Hey, is it? it are, what am I trying to say? Words. Is it smoky where you guys are? It was super, it's super smoky, smoky here for like a week here, and a half. But then it kind of rained a little bit this morning and it cleared up this a little, evening. Kind of. Hope you're all staying safe and breathing easy. Yeah, stay inside if you can. We've been having nonstop uh, air alerts, like that our air isn't clean. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of scary. That's probably a lot of places around. Yeah. The Is it the Canadian fires? North Is it a conspiracy? There's no way to know. <laughs> Join us for the next episode of Kim Trails. Conspiracy Podcast. Um. As more folks are joining in, I just want to let you guys know that we are a brick and mortar bead store in the uh, St. Louis area. We're in a small city called Fairview Heights on the Illinois side of the Mississippi divide. Um, we have beads, we have yarn, we have other fun crafty yes. items, yes. and we've got friendly faces in the store, happy to help. So if you are ever in the St. Louis area or within traveling distance, sometimes we have friendly faces. We would. <laughs> sometimes your mom's here. Stop. <laughs> My mom is. I'm just kidding. Often friendly. <laughs> she's watching. She's going to. Yeah. She's going to be mad at I'm you. Just kidding. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so if you are watching on Facebook, you might see, uh, uh, one of those friendly faces, Becky, uh, in chat on Facebook, she'll be linking, um, in the chat. So if you see somebody posting links that, you know, it's not the bead place, you can trust Becky. She's one of us. She hello. says hello. hello. <laughs> we need one more like. I'm just saying one more like before we see you. We roll the beautiful bead footage. Yeah. So. Um, we are here every Wednesday, as Alex said, at 7 p.m. Central, um, here live. And I know, tonight... I was just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Sally says, Abby's mom is great. I met her last time I was in the shop. Yeah, she's fun. Um, so tonight we are looking at brass from different parts of the continent of Africa. So. <clears throat> We are going to be just focusing on brass beads this evening. In store, we have other metals that are made in Africa, but we are focusing specifically on brass tonight because that is um, our widest metal selection. Um, but uh, Ghana and Ethiopia and Nigeria are um, areas in Africa that have a lot of very skilled metal production um and it has been that way for a long long Forever. long time um so because we've had uh lots of different beautiful metal beads come from those parts of africa throughout the years we are not only looking Hi, at Kim. modern african brass tonight but we are also going to look at some vintage and some antique african brass tonight mm -hmm. so i hope you guys like what we have to show you um we are also going to be making a fun knotted bracelet tonight i don't know if you guys saw it in the sneak peek on the um like thumbnail but we've got some asante bronze and some i think i think was that the nigerian bronze the last yeah nigerian bronze and Ghanaian bronze and then we're also going to show a simple earring project tonight that's just basic knots and these knots are a lot easier than you'd expect so 
Um, what's cool about the earring project is if you are not super into long earrings, this can be shortened by just using fewer beads, or you can actually transition this weave into a really, really, really cool bracelet. So if we don't sell out of all of these beads by the end of the show tonight, I am going to be making myself one of these bracelets. So let's, let's do it. It oh, would it be. could. It yeah. would be really cool. All right. Feature. We're going to switch over to the hand cam. The hand cam. The famous, maybe infamous at this point. So, you know what we didn't tell them was how they could shop. How are they going to shop? Well, boom, right there. Switch. That's how oh, they're okay, going to shop. Yeah, we're good. We'll just get going. Um, if you would like to shop, you can type the letter of the item that you would like to uh, purchase in the chat if you're watching live. Um, if this is your first time shopping, please make sure to follow up with us after the show. So Hi, let Elise. us know how are you? what your email address is so we can send you your invoice. Your invoice will come via email. Um, and then if you are shopping the replay, so if you're watching this after the fact, not watching live, please send us a message either on Facebook or through our website's messaging system um, to let us know what your order is. Because sometimes we don't get notifications on comments from previous lives. Do. So if Actually. you want to get your beads, if you're watching the replay, um, make sure to send us a message about your order. Yep. Okie dokie. Let's Other do it. To it but let's to do, do it. it. So let's, let's get it. into it. Let's do it. It's nice being able to control Let's do it. what people see. Let's do it. Are we on hand cam? Yes. Okay. All right. Here we go. A, A, A. A. What I said. We have awesome Price. four millimeter. Well, hold on. I'm getting to that. Four millimeter uh, cut corner cubes or faceted cubes or cornerless cubes. These are solid brass. Um, these are $32 for a full strand or 16 for a half strand. So I'm going to zoom out and show you how big one of these <clears throat> strands are. So you've got all of these. Very metal. All of these beads here. And they are approximately um, four millimeter cubes. Now, these are made in both Ghana and Ethiopia. And they are beautiful. What's great about this modern African brass is they have smooth finishes. So because they have smooth finishes, they kind of look like a beautiful antique gold color. Thank you, Barbara. And we all know how pricey gold can be. So it's great to have a solid metal bead like this um, where you don't have to worry about the color wearing off down to a different color bead. Now, brass is a metal that can oxidize. However, you can just clean it off and then it's bright and shiny again. How large are the holes? The holes are large. I would say you can fit like a one to 1.5. Oh, that's not focusing. I'm sorry. I would say you can fit probably like a one to 1.5 millimeter cord through there. They're not like those hollow cubes. Sometimes with like the three mil itty bitty ones that we've had over the years, they're almost hollow and they can kind of be sharp on the edges. That's not this. These are really, really smooth. So they'd be great for stretch cord and things that like aren't super, super Thank sturdy. You, Sally. <clears throat> these are really, really nice. I was really happy to see the quality of these because sometimes with, like the reproductions of this African brass, you can get these weird like stripes where they're not high polished, but these are super smooth. They just look soft and they feel good too. Like I can do this and my thumb doesn't hurt at all. <laughs> okay, moving on. Oh, and the next, the next two um, items that we're looking at are gonna be the same uh, manufacturing and location. So this is B. This is 32 a strand or 16 for a half strand. And check out these little beautiful three millimeter rounds. Such a beautiful color. Same size strand. And just for reference so everybody knows as I'm putting everything uh, the the B dash 32 slash 16 just so everyone is clear. The 32 is for full the 16 is for half. So the first number will always be the full strand and the second number 
will be for Habs fan. Just wanted to say that so there's no confusion. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks, Alex. So this is B, and these <clears throat> are beautiful three millimeter solid brass rounds. And again, guys, this is modern brass. <clears throat> All right. Moving on as I untangle what I just tangled. I just realized what this I is just... C. This is also 32 a strand. How big are these? Let's use our handy dandy Oracle. Becky, if you've got uh, a link to the Oracles in chat, um, that would link be fantastic. Up. Let's see how big these guys are. These are 2.5 by 3.5. Uh, kind of disc rondelles, so if you will. So A is a shape. four millimeter and B is a three millimeter? Yes. Correct. Yeah. A is just like slightly bigger than four. And because they are um, all a little bit unique in shape, we're going to say that you, B is slightly bigger than three. Shout out to Becky. The MVP of the stream. Hype in chat for Becky. Yeah. Leave some heart emotes. Thank you, Barbara. Are we coming across clear tonight, guys? Looks clear to me. Looks great in the viewfinder, but I don't know if it's because I adjusted the angle or if my glasses are clean. Oh, that's or... good. <laughs> Thank you, Kim Neal Carnes. I always want to say Kim Neal for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> Kim Neal Carnes. All right, we are going to get caught up and move on. Uh, oh, my goodness. Hold on. Thank you guys so much. We really, really appreciate this. Uh, I know I've been talking about it for a couple weeks now, saying that we have some super exciting news all right. coming up. But I just got word that um well i got confirmation today that we can announce it tomorrow hmm. <laughs> it got it got pushed back i haven't been intentionally kind of Alrighty. teasing you guys we're, we're, we're good to go all right cool, cool, cool. next up on to d this is where we get complicated you ready um and i'm saying you because it's it's complicated for you alex oh i don't we're going to do. I don't do complicated. We're going to do. I'm going to tell you the prices first, just so Alex can get it on screen before I show you right. so we don't get confused. Yeah. We're going to do $3 a bead. We're going to do $25 a half strand or $48 a full strand. That messes up my. What I'm I just sorry. Told you. I know. I'm sorry. 48 and 25. Yep. All right. So to keep Get a little to bit be of consistent a... with what I just said. You can do it backwards. That's fine. Right. Um, uh, you get a little of... bit of a discount if you buy a full. Okay. Oh, yeah. So the first letter is for a single bead. The second letter is for a full strand, and then set the the final. Not letter. Numbers, sorry. Numbers. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let me restart. Let me start. <laughs> you just confused the first, everybody. The first price, there we go. The first price is for a single bead. The second price oh, is for a yeah. full strand. And then the final third price is for a half strand. Okay. All right. So <laughs> we did it. These are very vintage Ghanaian lost wax cast beads. Oh, 25? So, not, oh, 25, yes. Oh, my gosh. I put 15. Shout out. Yes, thank you. Wait, is thank that right? Thank you to yeah. whoever said that. Yeah, Stand it's $3. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I said it twice and you didn't correct me. I wasn't paying attention. Oh I was trying to gosh. figure out words are hard. if I was going to do my Especially when they're not your correct. words. <laughs> I know, man. Um, so anyway, these are beautiful uh, lost wax casts. Ghanaian what if they're lost? beads, we found them. and they're sometimes called basket beads because you, of this beautiful, intricate design. What's really cool about these strands is their interesting patina. So we often see some significant darkening on uh, types of brass, like Asante brass um, and, and other 
other types of kind of like vintage style African brass, like Ethiopian or Nigerian brass, even Ghanaian brass. But this particular type of brass, um, I don't know what caused it. I don't know if it was like the, the storage conditions or what, but we don't have a lot of pitting on these. I mean, there are some pits, like you can see there. We don't have a lot of pitting on these and they are super bright and they have this almost like white cast to them, which is super, super cool. So these you, are, how big are these? Mm -hmm. Let's see how big they are. They are up, I would say not quite three quarters of an inch, but <clears throat> each one is different. If you are buying multiples of loose beads, we will do our best to get you a, um, a good match, but please keep in mind that as these are handmade and as they are very, vintage. very vintage, um, that you know they they are different. These are super there are cool. differences. I love that them. they're different too. Yeah, so I'm the gonna zoom is, out. I don't know what you call that, but some of them are like got that kind of white stuff on them. Yeah. What is that? That's a that's a patina. Patina, yeah. yeah. It's like American pickers, you know. Patina. <laughs> So here's these beautiful beads. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. We're all about rolling that beautiful bead footage. And you know, we have had these beautiful <laughs> basket lost wax beads How many? from Ghana before, but we don't usually see the varying in the design. So we have, let me zoom in so you can see what I'm talking about. How many about. on a half strand? Um, what's 28 divided, so 14. 14, how are they heavy? Uh, they are not heavy individually, but when you have a full <laughs> strand of them, my hand is getting tired. Um, <laughs> I mean, they're hollow, if that if that gives you any indication of um, how heavy the beads are, but yeah. they're a really kind of thick, thick, like wiring of brass. So you can see that we have not only swirls, like zigzags, oh, you can't see where my finger is, so not only do we have zigzags on the pattern, but we also have braid twists. So these are these are called fancy beads when they have those additional combined details like that. Very cool. Okay. Oh, I'm tired now. I gotta take a break. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Give me just a second to grab a drink. E. Right. Mm -hmm. Next. E. We just have full strand options. And the reason why we do that is because they are also very, very, very vintage. So um, quantity is limited. They're 48. 48. Quantity is limited. And also there's odd numbers on the strands, so we can't do half strands for these. What size are the beads? Hi, just tuned in. What size are the beads? Um, are the the ones we one? just looked at, they do vary, but they're anywhere from slightly above half an inch to slightly above three quarters of an inch. So this is also beautiful lost wax Cascanean brass. You can see that we've got some of that kind of classic bronze coloring where we've got a little bit of that kind of copper look, but so they nice. are Patina. brass. Yep. A lot of times when you heat brass and when you work with brass, oh. you'll get this beautiful red coloring on it, depending on the chemicals that you're using. So they are not copper. That is just a reaction. As a metalsmith, I am unfortunately all too familiar with that red patina that we get on brass when we accidentally do the wrong thing and then we have to work to remove it. But in this case, it's beautiful. <laughs> all right. So um, we are going to move on to our next set of items but before I do that because you guys did express interest last week I want to show you something very very special um, I'm going to take a minute to just kind of show you one of our very very cool <laughs> and special um, and yep yeah, I'm gonna um, unique one-of-a-kind pieces that we have for sale here in the store generally we do not put these like super massive or super, super antique beads um, in our shows just because, you know, they're very expensive uh, to ship it. It would be like super expensive. Um, but I did just kind of want to show you. 
So this is early 18th century brass. This is called Yoruba beads. Um, and then this particular Yoruba bead strand has what's called a chief centerpiece. So this is, um, this is actually waist beads, believe it or not. Um, so these are Nigerian waist beads and they're made by the Yoruba people in Nigeria. Um, so oftentimes you'll see, you know, beads like this that are a lot smaller and a lot less decorative, um, but this is what they're actually modeled after. So this particular strand was, I, I just wanna tell you my experience for this strand. This particular strand was the only, only strand that I have ever seen of these that did not have extreme pitting. This is almost immaculate. And it is incredible to me that we only see these very small little bits of pitting on these beads. These are incredibly, incredibly special. And I just, I feel really lucky that we get to have beads like this in the store um, for people to just kind of learn about. So that's my spiel about these very special brass beads that I wanted to just kind of include in the show to show you guys you know, something that's inc incredibly, it's just like, it's a really cool uh, display of artistry um, that these people in Nigeria have been creating for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of years, depending on your beliefs of <laughs> our, our timeline. Okay, so we got some comments here. It says that's massive. One more of these on their waist. High five. Yep, very cool. I love that. That should be in a museum. Well, there are beautiful examples of um, African brass artistry in museums all over the world, um, but it's it's incredible what you can find just through through bead traders, um, either in Africa or um, African men specifically Kenyan and Nigerian bead traders that come through North America and, and give us the opportunity to see and, and enjoy these beads. <clears throat> okay, let's move on. What, what, what number letter were we on? Um, F. E, F, G, H, I, J? Yeah, we just did E. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, so um, we are still going to be looking at traditional um, lost wax casting methods for these. Are these all the same price? They are. Ooh, easy peasy. And before we start looking at these, I uh, want to tell you guys that, that is. this is a really, really, really good deal. Um, normally, when we see these uh, types of pendants, they start at around $20 for the small ones and they go up to 40. That's my experience when I have seen these. And then also the ones that I've seen are not quite as detailed um, and not quite as thick and heavy. So yeah, before we start, yeah. uh, Elise asked, what are the knobs on the sides for just, decor just decorating? I assume that's a question. You know, I wish I knew the answer to that, um, but I don't. I it, there might be some um, like cultural significance. I'll do a little bit of research and see um, what I can find. But unfortunately, when I do my my research on these specific designs of beads, um, on the older beads specifically, it's it's kind of tricky to find. Um, unfortunately, our modern history has not done a great job of uh, preserving um, the the story that's that should be told by the beautiful beads um, and by the people who make them. But um, what's available to me through my research sources is a little bit limited. Um, when I ask specifics from our, our bead traders that come through, sometimes, unfortunately, there's a language barrier. So often um, the most that I am able to kind of understand is uh, how old the beads are um, and, and where they're made. But sometimes even that, I have to do my own research to try to figure out um, where and when um, and why. So. And then do you know how old D are? Let's see, what was D? Okay, I don't know specifically, but my guess would be um, probably the, the 
middle of the, the 19th century. Um, I, I don't know for sure. And with it being an unusual patina like that, I can't really say. Um, but those designs on there and like seeing the pitting like that, my guess would be somewhere around the 40s or 50s. But I mean, that patina, I don't really know. Um, but uh, they were sold as vintage. Vintage now means um, 20 years, but vintage used to mean 30 years. Um, so I, I don't really, I can't really say for sure. Um, okay, so moving on to our uh, Ethiopian and Ghanaian brass. Mm -hmm. Now, these designs that we're going to be looking at are popular uh, designs in both uh, several Ghanaian cultures and uh, several groups of people in Ethiopia. Um, if I know the specific designs, I will tell you, um, but a lot of them are popular designs in lots of different cultures. So not only are these particular pieces made using the traditional lost wax, um, like casting methods, um, but a lot of times they'll use charcoal and sand casting methods um, to create these. And now these are modern brass. They could be, they could barely be vintage um, because a lot of these kind of sit in markets for a while or get carried around by traders for a while. Um, but these are, are considered modern brass designs. So these are just $9.95 a pendant. This is our first one. This is F. And it is a spiral design. Now this spiral design oh, man, that's is doing crazy stuff on the uh oh, camera. sorry guys. I'll try to no, hold it still. It's because of the spiral, yeah. It's just um, an optical, optical illusion. <laughs> so the, of course the spiral design is a very, very common design in most cultures throughout the world. That's and cool. just to kind of give you a, a, a look at some of the different coloring, we have some bright brass and That's some so darker cool. brass. All right. G. Ain't nothing but a G thing, G. baby. G. So this particular symbol I have seen in uh, both the um, like Ashanti brass and also uh, some of the the uh, Ethiopian like woven basketry and uh, brass designs as well. This is G. We're frozen. Uh oh. Um, multiple people are saying it too. Um, hmm. Good now. Oh, uh, maybe not. I don't know. Not much we can really do on our end, unfortunately. Yeah, sorry about that. We'll just kind of slow it down for a minute, and if anybody has any questions of like specific items we are happy to go back and, and not take a saying look. on the stream here that audio has been cutting in and out huh hmm well well we'll talk slow <laughs> so this is g she said it's good now though okay we're gonna move on to h and this we see a lot in Ethiopian designs, um, but I, ca I can't I tell you if it's strictly an Ethiopian design. But these are stunning. And this little plaque in the middle is pretty smooth. So if you wanted to, I'm not saying you should, but if you wanted to, you could stamp something in the middle of that, engrave something in the middle of that, or even glue something it in the middle of that. It might be just a Facebook problem because... Is YouTube doing okay? Yeah. I mean, YouTube is... YouTube's designed YouTube for streaming. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, if your stream's cutting in and out, guys, I would say maybe go watch on YouTube. Or just um, refresh. Yeah. Go yeah. to a different part of the house. Thing. I mean, Hopefully, there's a million wit reasons why well, it could be happening, but I'm pretty sure it's not on our end. Um, or maybe it is, and, and StreamYard is just not telling me. But yeah. usually StreamYard will tell me if there's my device connectivity is, in, information or uh, connectivity problems. My devices haven't frozen, but yeah, it could fine. be like an output. Thank you, Elise. Um, hopefully the replay is okay. All right. Moving on to I. Now this is a Ghanaian design. 
So this is a classic kind of uh, more Ashanti a or a, a Ghanaian design. No, this no, is letter. I, I, 995. Did we um, skip H? Nope, H oh, was no. the last one. Well. Okay, so let's refresh. <laughs> so don't put anything on the screen. Right. This was F. Yep. F as in Frank. This is G as in golly, look how cool that is. And then this one is H. This is the current one? As in holy wowza, that's a really neat pendant. And now we are moving on to I, which we see in a lot of Ghanaian designs. So this one here has two holes. So we've got a V-shaped pendant. This would be so cool with either some African amber um, or like, wouldn't it be neat with some serpentine, like jumbo rondelles? Thank you, Elise. Oh, that would be super cool. I just fell in love with these. And these are a little bit of a brighter brass than some of the other ones. So these are really high polished very fresh <laughs> um, and then they've got a really shiny back so if yeah, gold are, is more your style versus brass you could easily implement this into some of your shiny gold designs. Jim said these brass pieces are so cool and unique I know and they're so inexpensive too this one I have to say is a little bit thinner than some of the other ones but you, on, the trade-off on just like the, the incredible <clears> uniqueness <throat> of this design I think is just really neat and they're all that bright brass finish super super high polish Alrighty. all right all right moving on to J See you in a minute so J is a little bit different because it does not have that casting um, kind of design imprint that we see on the other pieces. This is going to be, um, a lot of times we'll call this the wheel. Um, a lot of times we'll call this the Ethiopian cross. This is a, a Ethiopian design. And this symbol has been used in a variety of ways um, by a variety of cultures within Ethiopia. Um, and this is actually a symbol that has traveled all across Africa um, lots and lots of places in Europe. So what's really awesome about African trade beads, and you guys have heard me say this before, what's really awesome about African trade beads is that they are not unique to Africa. Um, a lot of them originally weren't even made in Africa, but Afri countries in Africa and people in Africa have done a fantastic job of just attaching history and stories to these beads. So um, they, they have traveled all over the world, either, um, you know, uh, through traders or um, just kind of people traveling and making their, their voyages. Uh, and I just, I just really uh, enjoy the anthropological aspects of what we do. So, on to K. <clears throat> K is a beautiful flower a little bit smaller than some of the other ones but it is a chunky brass piece so 9.95 that's cool yeah i love this it would be gorgeous with some pearls what kind of flower is that i don't know i, don't know. I should know but i don't uh -huh. anybody know what kind of flower that is Mm -hmm. On to L. We do have limited quantities of L, but we have this beautiful design here. And this, as you guys may know, is a design that has been used by a number, a number, a number of cultures um, inside of Africa, outside of Africa, all across that part of the world, really, uh, or I shouldn't say that part, that side of the world, really. Um, and, you know, there there are lots of ideologies and uh, religious beliefs that utilize this symbol um, as a symbol of wholeness and, and, and kind of being in touch with 
uh, the world around you and all being one together. Um, but, you know, you can kind of um, assign your own ideologies to symbols that are shared by lots of different cultures. Um, another thing that I think is so special about making your own designs with things that um, kind of have transitioned over the years in meaning. All right, so we are moving on to M. And these are those beautiful wheels. This is $4. Oh, these are- you lied to me. You why? said these are all $9.99. Well, we're moving on to something else. <laughs> so these are uh, these are vintage lost wax cast uh, Ghanaian wheels. This is Ashanti bronze, also sometimes called Asante bronze or Asante bronze. Um, our pronunciations are a little bit different uh, than theirs. Um, but they're Sally. made by the Asante or Ashanti people. Uh, which is a region within Ghana. And they are, the Ashanti Thank people you, are just kind of, um, I don't know, well known for their incredible artistry, not only with uh, like incredibly advanced metalworking, but, um, you know, they were light years ahead of other cultures um, with their metalworking uh, for many 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 years and uh, also with really intricate basket weaving uh, and reed weaving and they also are known for their really really cool bright fabrics that they create so these wheels are neat I'm gonna drop these two and grab a couple more just because they are all gonna be different uh -oh. each one is individually cast and they're hollow All and right. because they have those holes in them those Change are intentional holes by the way now. um All because right, they Sally, have, gotcha. because they have those holes and then they allow for really cool design possibilities All right. cool but while we're on this <clears throat> letter i just want to show you the bracelet that we're going to be learning to make in just a few oh. That's all stuck in my finger. That's not good. Might be a soft flex splinter. It, it's got to be. They are the worst. How do I get it out? Have they got tweezers? Uh, not on this table. Um, let's do our last item, and then I'm gonna recommend that you get a piece of tape to take it out with. Anna. Yep. Price. They are six fifty for ten. So these are a very, very. Um, Welcome back. Thank you, Barbara. Like, I don't. I, I don't want to say yeah. popular, but they're a, a really iconic. Iconic is the better word. Um, vintage African bead. These are handmade in Nigeria using traditional lost wax casting. So, look at these beautiful, heavy, kind of brushed and textured rings here so these are often used as spacers you'll see full strands of them they're worn as full strands um but i like to use them as like decorative links or just like an accent spacer they're really cool to kind of like make your own chain out of it but they are neat so they are 650 for 10 of these gorgeous links it didn't work and let's say they're from 10 to 12 millimeters. Let me measure them. Yeah, they're all a little bit unique in size and shape, but they're um, from 10 to 12 millimeters. Maybe. <laughs> so that was in. Alrighty, so let's scooch this out of the way and let's make a cool design. Do you want to switch to face cam for just a sec while I reset my area here? Sure. I can lift the top of my head for a little bit. 
Um, so if you're just joining us, we do these live shows once a week where we either show new products or sale products. Um, and then oftentimes we'll make something fun as well. So tonight we're going to be using some of these gorgeous um, Ghanaian and Nigerian brass beads to create a fun bracelet and also a pair of earrings. Now this earring design can be modified to be shorter if you'd like, or you can use this design to make a bracelet. It'll make a really cool bracelet. What would you guys like to see first? The earring technique? See, you just said switch to face cam and now you're using- Oh, I'm sorry. Come on, you're I thought me, you, I thought you caught up and I thought you- <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. See? Okay, so here's the bracelet. <laughs> Amateur hour. I know. Um, so here's the bracelet, uh, and then <laughs> here's the pair of earrings. And, of course, the earring design can be made shorter, like I said, or you can turn it into a bracelet. What would you like to see first, the earring technique or earrings. the bracelet technique? There's one vote for earrings. All right. There is zero votes for anything else. Let me zoom in. Well, because they couldn't even see it till just a second ago. <laughs> Communication is key. Yeah, my bad. Thank you, uh, Barbara. I'm going to run and grab what I need real quick. And while I'm doing that, and while you guys are voting, I, uh, Alex can tell you guys how to, how to find us elsewhere. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us. Uh, like we said at the beginning of the stream, we do these every single Wednesday at 7 p.m., you can check out bplace.net if you would like to shop further. We have a monthly fun pack uh, every month that we send out. Really cool stuff. Um, you can sign up for that. You get a discount if you sign up uh, for the subscription. It's $30 a month, and you get much more than $30 in value and things of if you sign up for that. So, and then if you want to participate in today's live stream, although the live sale part is kind of over but if you're watching on the replay and it's your first time all you have to do is message us either on our facebook page the bead place or message us on beadplace.net uh, and you can send us all your information and your order and we will invoice you a well we'll send you an invoice we'll invoice you an invoice <laughs> um, but that is that is how you can purchase any of the awesome beads that we we showed off today and yeah bplace.net is the place it's right down there right over there <laughs> um but yeah thanks everybody for hanging out with us like i said we do these every single wednesday we do uh live streams occasionally on fridays as well and usually it's just me just trying to fumble through making jewelry basically um <laughs> but yeah we have fun and abby I see her. Hopefully she's on her way back. Hi, I'm stalling. Uh, how's the weather where you're at? It's really smoky here and the air quality is terrible. What is happening? Why is this happening? She's back. Hooray. The is falling. It's true. <clears throat> Sorry. But yeah. Okay. 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 What's... And before we get started, make sure to like that button. Uh, smash no, that no, no, like no, no, no. button. I messed up. <laughs> make sure to smash that like, like button. button. Follow and subscribe. <laughs> All right, we're having a good time. All right. Six, uh, six fifty for ten. Hundred and ten hate index. Holy smokes! Whoa! It was only like ninety today here. Who? What do we win? Oh, I didn't get a tape measure. Which is uh, still very hot for me. I don't. I don't do heat. I oh, like. What one what? Like Nobody. Bracelet, or uh, bracelet, bracelet. Bracelet. There's okay. like three votes. <laughs> okay. Good Wait, deal. Wait, hold on. Earrings. I mean, we're going to do them both. It was just. Bracelet. It was just what bracelet, to do. Bracelet. Bracelet. Okay. Bracelet. Bracelet. So, the other material that we're using besides this awesome um, brass that we showed tonight, uh, we are using our. Uh, nope, not vegan suede. This is our so two out. millimeter cotton cord. So this two millimeter cotton cord is vegan. And I know that you're like, what? It's cotton. Of course it is. Well, 
this is <laughs> this is waxed cotton cord, but the wax is soy based, so it is um, Echo and Echo 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 ecologically Echo. friendly Echo. Um, and uh, ethically hey. friendly as well. So I can just drop the linking that in chat, and uh, otherwise you can just type in cotton in the search bar on our website if you are not able to see Becky's links. Um, so comes in a wide variety of colors. I'm using our red. Now I do want to tell you that our red is a soft red. It's almost like a rust color. Um, so keep that in mind if you're looking for this specific color. This is the red that's on our website. So let's switch to hand cam. The materials that you will be working materials with. Materials we'll be using are. For this project, we are going to be using uh, letter M which was those awesome Ghanaian wheels. And then we are also going to be using the letter in. You know what we should do what? is after the fact, download the video, cut it off at the very big beginning of the project, and then re-upload it to the YouTube page. Oh, maybe. That'd be super easy, dude. So we're just going to be using two of letter in. Um, for this project. So we're going to need two of those discs and one of the wheel beads. We are going to need one yard of our cotton yard. cord. And so I'm going to measure and cut that now. Um, what keep color in was mind, used for the bracelet and earrings? It looks rose or rusty pink. Dusty pink. Yeah, it's actually, it's our red. Um, so Alex, can you type in cotton on our search bar and we'll see what um, like where it is on that page. The camera's skewing it a little yeah, wider. Is. is this it? Yeah, two millimeter wax cotton. So click that and then it's the second to the last one. It's called, I guess on our site, rust it's called red. rust red. It's not really pink. I'd call it like a light rust. And that link that Becky did just drop in chat is is the link to that. And if you click that, it'll bring up the item page. And on that item page, like Abby said, it's the second from the end. So it's called Rust Red right next to turquoise and in between turquoise and natural. Yeah, I don't know why it looks pink on screen. It's definitely not pink. I mean, it could be pinky, but it, it's a rust red. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it's like there's, a, there's pink. I mean, it, it is pinkish, but yeah, not really. It's like a light red. There are same colors to choose from, too. So <laughs> yeah. You can pick whatever color so you want. So we've got, you'll need two yards if you're doing both the earrings and the bracelet. Um, so what I've done is I've cut my yard of cotton and I'm going to string it through my. Yeah, the red, it's definitely different. It's, it's definitely a different red than my hat, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, yeah. My, my cardinal red is what my hat is. Yeah, and honestly, guys, the only reason why we call it rust red instead of just rust is because, like, when we have it manufactured in schools, the color name is red. <laughs> so we're like, is it red or is it rust? So we just pick a mid, uh, middle of the road name. So what we've done here is we've just strung that beautiful wheel bead to the middle of our cord. So we're making sure our tail ends are equal in length. And I'm going to hold this here at the middle and I'm going to make this little loop right here. So we've got like a little loop and I'm going to go around that loop. So now when I flip this up, I have two loops. And I'm going to take my tail end through the second loop that I made and then the first loop that I made. And I'm going to pull it tight. And so what we're doing is we're making like a barrel knot, but a, a, almost like a half mm. barrel knot. Mm. So when we tighten it, we have what kind of looks like a barrel knot, except one side is an X and the other side just has two loops of our barrel knot. 
and that neat. We've got an X on one side, and we have just kind of like two bars on the other side. So we have that to anchor our bead right there in the middle. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to make our loop, we're going to wrap around our loop, and then we're going to bring the tail end through the other side and tighten. It's important to make sure your loops that you've made don't slip under or over each other when you're tightening because then you'll kind of lose your knot. So just tighten carefully and make sure you're tightening the knot close to our coin and transition any of that slack if you need to to kind of correct anything that slips along the way. All right. That's what we have so far. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make this really cool kind of like figure eight link through our Nigerian donut bead. So we are going to grab one of our donut beads. We're going to string it on to one end. Alex, do we have any questions so far? Can everybody see okay? That's I can't good. see the comments when That's I'm good, no doing questions. this. Awesome. So I've strung that all the way down to my knot, and I'm going to string through it again. So here's my tail end coming out of the top. I'm going to string through it from the bottom to the top again. And I'm going to make sure that it's tight down to my knot. And now I'm going to do the same thing again, but I'm doing it around the other side. And that creates this awesome figure eight knot. Now this is going to be a tight fit. Sometimes I have to use my pliers to pull it through. Sometimes it slips right through depending on the size and shape of that Nigerian cast bead. So just play with it. I promise it'll go through. I tested them. <laughs> um, and so now we have this, whoops, let me get that out of the way. Now we have this cool figure eight link right here. So what I like to do is I like to go one step further and I like to tighten it super, super close to this knot right here. So what I'll do is I'll just pull on one side of the knot, the, the side that we did first. So pull right here and see how much slack I was able to get in there to transition <clears throat> out to the end of the bracelet. That really kind of makes your work look a little bit more structural. Um, and less loosey-goosey so your design can be a little bit stiffer like that see how much better that looks than it did before i tightened it so we've got that cool kind of figure eight infinity link going through the donut bead and now we're going to do the same thing on the other side with our other one this one's a little tighter, so you might get to watch me struggle a little bit to pull this through. So again, we're stringing on. We're going to go up through the link again. And try to keep it tight, but you still have to go through it one more time. So it's okay if it's not all the way tight. We want it to be tight enough that we don't have to move it too much loose enough that we can get it through. So Sandra says, I love this. Great design. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I like keeping designs simple like this so the beads can shine, oh. but doing a little something extra with the core just to, you know, give the beads what they deserve design wise. And Sally says, how sticky is the cord? Same as Irish wax line? No, it is not a sticky cord at all. The only reason why it's waxed is it has this like sealed coating on it. I don't know. I, so I I can tell, like when I hear something being touched, I can kind of get an idea of how it's gonna sound. Um, so I don't know if this is gonna help at all, but this is what it sounds like. So I'm doing this and there's absolutely no residue on my hands or my fingernails. And then maybe that sound will kind of give you a better idea of what the cord is like. But it's, it's waxed, meaning that it's sealed and it's not going to fray, um, except for at the ends. Um, it is a stiffer cord that won't like shred or fuzz like some cottons will. 
uh, but it doesn't have a sticky residue at all. All right, so this is what we've got so far. Now, if we look on our sample bracelet, you can see that on the other side of these cool little figure eight knots, we have another one of these barrel knots. But instead of actually putting that knot there now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize these other barrel knots as my way of getting the bracelet on and off. So these are anchored here. If I didn't go through them twice like that, they wouldn't be anchored. They could maybe slide with wear. But these are anchored. I don't have to worry about putting another knot on this to stop them from sliding. So I can just use this knot here as my way of taking the bracelet on and off with a sliding knot. Does that make sense? So we've got a bracelet essentially with no clasp here because we're utilizing that sliding knot. Becky like said the figure eight knot is one of those techniques I love because it's easy but looks pretty impressive. Yeah, definitely. It is super <clears throat> impressive looking. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the size for our bracelet. And how we're going to do that is we're going to wrap it around your wrist and kind of pinch the end of the tail or pinch the tail end where you would need to put your knot. So I'm going to gently unwrap and then I know that this is about how big my bracelet's going to be. So that's where I'm going to put my knot. So we're doing the same knot that we did before to anchor our Ghanaian wheel kind of in the middle of our bracelet, but this time we're also including the cord that makes our bracelet. So before I actually knot this, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so that you can actually see where everything is going. So this here is actually our tail end. Give me one second. <laughs> it's actually our tail end from the other side. So it comes up here to close the bracelet. And then we're actually going to do the same thing with the other tail end to kind of meet the other side and make it a whole bracelet and symmetrical. So before I move on and get stuff tied, does anybody have any questions about which direction is going where? I know you haven't seen the knots yet, but does anybody need further clarification on what just happened? Let's see. So this is this is what we've got so far. I'm going to give you guys just a second to respond. And eventually once we tie those knots, we'll have a sliding knot bracelet that looks like this. All right, I think I'm going to move on. Alex, can you watch those comments too? Yep. Thank you. <laughs> no, I know, but I'm just saying like stop me if anybody says Hold on, what? So I've got my, my anchored tail end here and I'm holding both sides. I've got my tail end. I'm going to go around and through the bracelet twice. So I've got my loop, I'm going around again. And then what I'm gonna do is bring my tail end through both of those loops same exact thing we did before, except this time it's going around the bracelet or the back of the bracelet itself as well. So when we look at it from this direction, both of those cords are going in the knot. And then I'm going to tighten it. And again, we'll want to make sure that those knots aren't slipping over each other. And we're just going to tighten, 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 and try to not lose the size. Sometimes it'll take a couple of times of tying and untying to get your, your size planted just right. But normally what I like to do is I'll tie one side, I'll tie the other side to match it, making sure these are equal in length and making sure they're coming in so that they're not twisting a bunch. And I'll try it on before I cut the tail ends. So double loop, and then we bring the tail end through. All right, and tighten, tighten, tighten. And this cord is awesome because it holds these knots super well. 
but it is wax so it is kind of a little bit more stiff than some other cotton cords so sometimes you have to guide that tail end along because it'll want to kind of get stuck and so we're just going to tighten and transition slack so we don't lose that shape and then we've got a bracelet. So I'll give you guys kind of a close-up look at what we've just done here. So we've got the figure eight knot and then that cool kind of half barrel knot or X knot on the ends or on either side. So I am going to trim the tail ends off and we've got a finished bracelet. So what I like to do, like I said, before I trim those tail ends off, is try it on, make sure it's symmetrical, tighten everything if I need to, adjust everything, and then really tighten those knots good <laughs> so that um, it holds tension when you're wearing it and doesn't slip open. Um, I am going to probably maybe add a little dab of glue on the back of that before I wear it but I trust this cotton cord to not come undone. So it's okay to not glue it. Um, I just know that I'm rough on jewelry, but that was an easy peasy bracelet project. All right, so we are gonna move on to the earring design now. And like I said, this can be easily transitioned into a bracelet design. We're just gonna kind of keep it simple and short tonight with an earring design. So this earring takes about 12 inches, so one foot of cord. Now, I would recommend if you're new to knotting and new to working with cord like this, to use 18 inches of cord. If you absolutely hate to waste and you don't want to cut tail ends that are a little bit longer than what you need, you could squeak by with just one foot of cord. However, Abby, what glue would you recommend for this cord? I would do hypo cement. That way you can kind of like ease the needle into the knot so that it's hidden. And Becky, if you'd want to link the hypo cement, that would be awesome. Okay, so I'm going to cut 18 I got you, Sally. of this. And of course, 18 inches times two gives you a yard. So I have my cord here. I'm gonna start by folding it in half and I'm gonna tie an overhand knot. All right, so I'm going to tie an overhand knot with my cord doubled. So before I tighten it, I just want to kind of twist it around so you guys can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to tighten it. I like to make sure that when I'm making a pair of earrings, that I can be pretty consistent with the size of those loops so that they're fairly symmetrical. So I'm going to use my fingers to just kind of push that knot up and tighten it so that these two can be symmetrical. All right. They look pretty symmetrical to me. What do you guys think? And then of course, one side will have that crossover and the other side will have that double look. So making the earrings the way that I did requires five of these little links. I did that on purpose since they're sold in sets of 10. <laughs> so uh, this design requires five per earring. And the first thing that we're going to do is mm -hmm. string one of the beads on one side and bring it up to the top. And Becky just dropped the link to the two millimeter wax cotton cord. And I she says out. the cord is $1 per yard yeah. and available in 10 colors. Yeah. 
Okay, so what we've done so far is we've strung this bead on one of the cords. Now what we're gonna do is take the other cord through it. Sorry, I wasn't on camera. Take the other cord through it going in the opposite direction so that when we tighten, we can kind of see that our cords are coming out opposite directions. So tighten it so that it's pretty snug to the top, but not so snug that we don't have a little bit of space for movement. Then what we're gonna do is hold both cords together and we are gonna string both ends through one bead. So we've got our bead here. We're gonna string both ends through one bead. And so this is the look that we have so far. Suzanne said I thought one. I don't know what that's a reference to. But... I'm not sure either. Sorry. Oh, two yards are needed to for the wheel bracelet. Oh yeah, one one yard for the bracelet, one yard for a pair of earrings. You can get by with just two feet for the earrings uh, if you're if you're really good at knotting. But I recommend using 18 inches if you're new to knotting. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to make sure that these cords are kind of crossing through the bead that kind of anchors them together. And that's just going to create a little bit more fluid of a design. So they're kind of making an X through here. And then we're going to string another bead onto one side and bring the other cord through it in the opposite direction. And then we're gonna tighten it. And you can kind of see when we tighten it that that X that we made through that bead really helps it kind of just settle right into place how it should. So this is what we have so far. And if you've already made your first earring, what you can do is try your best to match the tension. So keep that in mind when you're making your second earring that you want to match the tension of your first earring. If, if that's your, your style, otherwise you can be symmetrical or asymmetrical. Okay, so we're going to then string both ends through the same bead again in the same direction. And again, we're gonna make sure that they're crossing over each other within that bead. And then we've got our final bead that we're stringing on to just one end, and then we're taking the other end through it in the opposite direction. Now, let's say that we're making this design a bracelet. You would just use I would say probably about three to four times the amount of cord um, that we would use for the bracelet, or I'm sorry, that we would use for the earrings. And then keep in mind that you have to attach a clasp to your loop. So you would either wanna string your clasp first, or you could leave this loop bigger and make it a button loop, or you could attach a clasp to your loop after the fact using a jump ring. But wouldn't one of these um, Canadian wheels make a really cool button? Like you could just string that on the end and tie a knot and then just pop that through the loop. I just think that would be really neat. Okay, so you're wondering, how do we finish off this earring? Well, what we're going to do is use these tail ends to tie another overhand knot. So we're just going to loop and place those tail ends through. And then we're going to tighten close to our beads. So before I tighten, I like to go through and make sure everything's sitting the way I want it to. Make sure nothing's all that twisted, especially these center guys. Sometimes what can happen is one side will get a little longer than the other, and then they'll want to sit sideways. So just go through and make any tension adjustments that we need to. For me, I need to tighten things up just a little bit so it'll match the length of the other earring. Like that. 
I'm going to check them. They're pretty even. So now I'm going to tighten this loop. And I like to kind of straighten out any of the like twisted cord on my overhand knots. Sometimes what will happen when I'm tying overhand knots is like one of these will be twisted over the other one. I don't take my knot out. I just kind of use my fingers to push it over the other loop and then tighten completely. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to trim my tail ends, but you guys are going to see something kind of funny when I trim the tail end. So with this cotton cord, I like to cut straight across rather than diagonal. Sometimes with suede lacing, I'll cut it on diagonal, but I cut straight across with this. And the reason is the cotton on the inside is white. And I don't want that to be super visible, which is why I don't cut at a diagonal. So sometimes what I'll do when I have that white spot visible on the bottom is I'll actually just take a marker and I'll just dab it with a similar color or with the dark color so that it just kind of blends into nothingness. I love the look of just kind of like an ombre ink effect on the bottom of this cord. So if you like that kind of vintage antique look, you can use a black marker like a Sharpie to just kind of almost give a dip dye effect on the bottom of the cord. You could of course use a similar color marker or um, like fabric dye if you want. Or here's another thing that I'll do sometimes. I will use a crimp bead cover and just kind of clasp it on the bottom and then put a little bit of hypo cement in there and it's good to go. So then the last step is to just grab an earring finding and hook it in. And you have a super fun pair of earrings. Yay! We did it! Awesome! <laughs> Becky says, insider secrets. All right, we're, we're going to switch back to face cam and we're going to hang out for a bit. So if anybody has any add-ons to their order or if you're watching replay and you'd like to place an order, please send us a message either on Facebook or through the messaging system on our website and we would be happy to help. Um, invoices will start going out tomorrow um, and sometimes it takes us more, more than a day to get invoices out depending on how busy the store is and depending on how many invoices we have. Um, but we will start sending them out tomorrow. Uh, if this is your first time shopping with us, you still have that soft butt splitter? Yeah, dog. I'll help you with that. Um, <laughs> if this is your first time shopping with us, uh, please remember to send us a message to let us know what your email address is. Um, <laughs> and then uh, if you are looking for other jewelry supplies, we would love it if you would check out our website. We all work it's really right there. B -place <laughs> we all work really hard on it, especially Becky, who has been linking in chat. She is our online inventory manager and she's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um, we will come back next week with bone and wood from different countries in Africa. Um, so we are super excited about that. How um, many yarns for the wheel bracelet? Just one yard for the wheel bracelet. So one this one, you just need one yard. And you will have some extra that you'll cut off. So like here, here's what I would be cutting off the tail end. So depending on your wrist size, you might only need two feet for your bracelet, but I would err with enough Rather to like tie your... Too much than too little. That's yeah, sure. I would I would make sure you've got um, extra to make your knot tying comfortable. Um, so one yard for this bracelet, mm -hmm. one yard for the earrings. So one yard split in two, of course, for your two ears. 
Um, so yeah, next week we're going to be taking a look at, um, I'm looking this way because I'm looking at our display. Um, we're going to be taking a look at bone and wood and some other unusual uh, parts and pieces that we'll throw in. Um, and then we did have a lot of people message last week um, because we sold out of those individual beads so fast. Um, we did have a lot of people asking if we did have any extras of those individual beads. And I want to let you know that we do have a couple extra um, for an eight inch bracelet, maybe a little more than one yard. Nope. Nope. I think one yard would still do an eight inch. You can order more if you'd like. I didn't catch the length of G. Uh, I will look. There's no way to know. N and T. Okay, so I just figured it'd be easier <laughs> to just show you. We have some left of M from last week. Not a lot, but we have a few left of M from last week. They were six. Here we have some left of P from Those last super week. Cool. Yep. These what are cool because they've the got length, like a flower. What's the length of G? Uh, we'll check. I gotta see what G was. Ain't nothing but a G thing, baby. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is long. How long is this? Nope. I know. I'm just holding it in front of me so I can She's see it. Going to the hand cam. Yeah, no. no. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, most of them are going to be around three and a half inches. So this was G. And not sure if you can see that, but it's about three and a half inches. Mm -hmm. Any parting words? Um, bead extravaganza is coming up. That's exciting. Um, October 7th, mark your calendars if you live by uh, a local bead shop because they might be participating in a cool event called Free Charm Day. Uh, that was very cool. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight, guys. Yeah, thank you, everybody. This was fun. We'll see you next week. Make sure to like, heart, and uh, share it, as always. Thank you so much. Again. Does it look like an alligator, or is that just me? Um, I think it's probably an alligator. Crocodile. Maybe? Sometimes we hear this uh, design called a snake, but it doesn't. This guy doesn't look like a snake to me. It looks more like an alligator head. Crocodile, but crocodile, crocodile. Kit for TGB, yes, very soon. Um, yeah, very soon. <laughs> we are working on uh, getting that stuff finalized and and uh, launched. Um, I think maybe Jill McKay has her kits out. I don't know if anybody else does yet. Maybe Softlex. Uh, but if you go to the Great Beat Extravaganza Facebook group, there's a, like a graphic that says kits, and that's where presenters will be posting their kits uh, as they become available. Ours is a necklace, um, and it's really cool, and I'm excited about it. Uh, I'll give you a hint. Uh, it calls for a one-step looper. So if you do not have a one-step looper, beadplace.net. you can find one at beadplace.net. Um, Again, or your right local beach shop. Yep. We could be. You can do it without a local. We could. Yeah. Come see us. Move to the St. Louis area if you're not already local. Um, <laughs> oh, Candies is out too. I haven't seen Candies. I'll have to check it out. Um, so it, you can do it without a one step looper, but it is a lot faster with a one step looper. So that's that. That's that. And this is this. Thank you all so much. We'll see you next week. Oh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I'm sorry. One more thing. Um, the 7th of July, we are participating in I'm a... a good outro, too. I know. I'm so sorry. i got to have, like, a list of things. You do. You need to write it down time. and talk about me with my paper. I know. You need to have paper. So, July 7th, we are participating in a virtual bead party with several other wow. uh, bead industry companies and designers. Uh, Softlex company is hosting an ornament, uh, a beaded ornament making party. So we have a kit that I'm hoping Becky can link if it's not too late in the stream. It's um, too late. <laughs> so our kits, our kits just came out um, and we are going to be making a fun 
uh, Christmas in July ornament on July 7th with Softflex Company. Okay. All righty then. All righty then. All righty then. <laughs> um, <gasps> we did shout it. out to All Jim right. Carrey, right? Thank uh, you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Uh, next Wednesday, maybe this Friday, we'll see. Stay up to date on our socials. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. Uh, we appreciate you yeah, all. Thank you so much. We may or may not have the, the best jewelry Grand shop. smell like brass. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've been handling a lot of metals today. Um, thanks, everybody. Hold we on. appreciate it. We may it. or may not have the best jewelry Instagram, according to something. May or may not. That you may or may not find out tomorrow. May or may not. So follow us on Instagram so you're not missing out. Adios. Becky just linked the kit. Thank you, Click Becky. Thank Bye you, everybody. Everything. Thank you. We love you. Bye. <laughs> Bye.